Thank you, thank you, Royal, uh, for joining Energy Live News. I would like uh, uh, to start this uh, interview by admitting that if it wasn't uh, your research, uh, probably I wouldn't be able to understand what uh, connection there is uh, between a uh, wind turbine uh, motor blade uh, and uh, the bird's uh, mortality. And actually, your research has uh, found uh, that by painting one uh, wind turbine uh, motor blade uh, black, uh, this could uh, reduce significantly significantly uh, the bird's mortality rate. Uh, can you tell us a little bit more about your research? Yes, so um, at the Smirla wind power plant in Norway, we have studied the um, potential impacts of um, the turbines, the wind turbines on birds, uh, not the least also white-tailed eagles, uh, with regard to collision. Uh, so these birds colliding with the wind turbines. Um, and after we've been studying this and their potential impacts on the population, et cetera, we also wanted to see kind of, okay, what kind of solutions are there to this kind of uh, collision mortality? Um, and from that, we started a new research where we actually wanted to test various measures uh, to see kind of if they could mitigate or reduce the impact of uh, collision or the likelihood of uh, collision. Uh, so one of these was also the painting of one of three rotor blades black um, and the rationale behind that is uh, that if you do that, then you can reduce the so-called motion smear um, of the turbines. You can remember that, you know, if the rotor blades are in operation, the rotor blades go quite fast, and especially at the tip of the rotor blades, they can go up to kind of 250 kilometers an hour. So they become invisible to the eye. They become blurred, also for our eyes, mm -hmm. also for birds. Painting one of the three rot uh, rotor blades black will increase the, con uh, the contrast a lot, uh, making them more visible. And also to the birds, which then kind of the thought was kind of that it would also uh, make them more aware of the uh, rotor blades and therefore reduce their risk of collision. And actually, uh, you have found that uh, the reduction in the mortality rate in the bird's mortality uh, rate uh, is significant, uh, can reach uh, up to 72%, right? That's correct, yes. Um, so what we did, we um, have uh, from previous research, we already had a long term uh, data set on uh, recording uh, carcasses uh, below the turbines. So, you know, uh, birds that were killed by the turbines for seven and a half years. After that, we painted four rotor blades uh, black, so at four turbines um, and compared also kind of the uh, number of uh, collisions at those turbines versus neighboring, you could say, control turbines, which are not painted. And we did that for another three and a half years. And then we could see uh, relative to what we had before and what we had after kind of what the impact, so the reduction was at the painted turbines. And then we came up with this kind of um, reduction of over 70%. I can understand from uh, what you're telling that uh, this uh, research uh, lasted for many years, uh, right? Uh, and it was tested on a specific uh, uh, wind power plant uh, in uh, Norway. Uh, actually, you have noticed that uh, this test uh, has a significant impact on a specific uh, species, on a specific bird species uh, in Norway. Well, I mean, w what we did in our test was to, s to look at the reduction in all bird species, so across bird species. Um, so not just looking at the white-tailed eagle, which obviously was kind of of our main interest uh, for the project, but we looked at all bird species because if it's going to be functional, it's going to be functional for all species at the same time. Um, but what we also kind of recommend is that what would be good now is to uh, replicate this study either in a new research project elsewhere, you know, by someone else or by us or whatever, uh, to do the same kind of study and test it in a, in a different site where you have maybe uh, different species uh, and different kind of environmental uh, conditions to see if we see the same kind of effect or alternatively to implement it in practice and monitor it uh, over time. So at least you can have a kind of, kind of learning by doing uh, approach so actually to see kind of, okay, does it really work if we now uh, implement it in practice? Uh, because if it doesn't help, it's likely it's not going to harm either. 
Uh, I have two more questions. Uh, which was the most complicated part of uh, this research? For example, uh, as I can remember, as I was uh, reading uh, your, uh, the paper, uh, I remember that uh, you have used uh, during this research uh, specially trained dogs uh, for fatality searches. So this is uh, the first question, uh, which was the most challenging part of this research. And the second one, uh, how sure uh, you feel about uh, these changes that can be applied in offshore and onshore uh, wind uh, installations? Uh, what was the most challenging? Well, there was many, many challenging parts of this research. Yeah. Um, and, you know, one is kind of using trained dogs. We had used them before, so we had experience with that. Um, so in a sense, that's kind of, we were used to that and we know how to deal with that. So that's maybe not kind of one of our kind of main uh, problems we had. One of the main issues that we had from the beginning is that when we implemented it now, it was on operational turbines, which means that, you know, the rotor blades are up on the hub. Um, and that meant kind of, we needed to have kind of uh, wind still days. Um, with certified personnel that can actually rappel down from the hub to do the painting kind of uh, while hanging it up in the air. That's not uh, something to kind of recommend for a future uh, um, practice. So it's rather kind of, you can do it kind of when the road blades are still on the ground. So that mm -hmm. was kind of one practical problem we had to deal with. Um, and others that we kind of, we only, we did not only look at the number of fatalities. Uh, we also tried to look at kind of do we see any behavioral changes looking at a variety of uh, methods, uh, bird radar, uh, uh, marking individuals with uh, GPS colors, uh, video systems, et cetera, to, to see if we can see kind of any kind of behavioral changes to these uh, painted roadways. And that was in the end proved to be more difficult to, to really see a clear behavioral response uh, relative to what we actually saw in a number of collisions that kind of, you could say, failed to collide after, after the painting. Apart from the black color, uh, did you try uh, another one, uh, another color? Or uh, specifically you tried uh, during this research uh, the black color? Yeah, so in this, this uh, study we only uh, apply this kind of black color because we had to make a choice kind of what to do. We cannot kind of use different uh, color regimes at the same time. But what we also indicate is that uh, what could be interesting now is also one, you could try different paints. Um, one option is, for example, uh, ultraviolet reflective paint, because a number of bird species can see in the ultraviolet spectrum. But also you can think of maybe more practical is looking at the uh, efficiency of using um, red uh, rotor blade tips, which is also used at the moment to warn aviation uh, in many, many countries. Possibly that would be, you know, just as effective. We don't know. So that would be nice to test uh, such a uh, uh, design as well, because then you have a kind of win-win situation where you can actually warn aviation and yeah. warn birds at the same time. So I would like to uh, uh, ask you, uh, Royal, as well, uh, before the construction of uh, a wind power plant, uh, what measures can be taken in order to avoid uh, these birds' collisions? Yeah, so... Um, if you're going to kind of uh, construct a wind power plant, um, then uh, most of the time you are kind of, you'll have to start kind of looking at the so-called mitigation hierarchy, which means that you, during the planning phase, will have to see how you can avoid placing um, your wind power plant in an area where you can expect to have a high risk of impact. Um, that obviously is a uh, complicated, um, yeah, challenge you will have to, to, to answer that, which is both based on kind of environmental considerations, societal considerations and technological considerations. Once you've done that and try to avoid kind of such uh, conflict areas, then you can during the design phase of your uh, wind power plant already kind of see kind of where do I place my turbines, like micro siting the turbines, placing it at sites where you expect them have to, to have le least impact um, where you place them. And only after that, once you're starting to construct the turbines, you can start thinking of actually reduction measures, such as painting the rotor blades black, which are then kind of functional during the operation, operational phase of the um, wind power plant. And then at a the final resort, you still have the option to you know, compensate or restore areas um, to further help reduce any impacts.
Uh, so finally, uh, the last question is, uh, what other measures uh, could be applied, in your opinion, uh, to both uh, offshore and uh, onshore uh, wind plants uh, in order to lower uh, the collision risk, apart from the painting? Well, there's many, many designs out there and kind of mitigation measures out there. Um, using paint is kind of very <clears throat> simple because it's very straightforward. You don't have any kind of uh, technology that is uh, tied to that. Uh, and that is also what's being, what people are trying to develop also is kind of uh, uh, radar systems, kind of bird radar systems or video systems, uh, or even combinations of that to detect birds and kind of be able to have a kind of operational shutdown of turbines uh, when birds are approaching. Um, my only hesitation is that that's very dependent on kind of these systems to be functional all the time, which may be kind of difficult, and especially in offshore situations. If something goes wrong with a system which is attached to a turbine, it's not that easy to go offshore and kind of mend it. You know, it's much easier to do that onshore. So the more full pro foolproof systems kind of would be probably pref uh, preferential in a way. And that could be um, detecting um, uh, collisions on a turbine and then having kind of more kind of, you know, Try and kind of predict when you uh, will have uh, risky situations, and that could be, for example, during uh, periods of heavy bird migration, um, or also kind of perfect days with kind of a lot of uh, um, thermal activity in the air, and where uh, there's less wind when there's often much more activity of birds in the area. Royal, thank you very, very much for your time. It was a really pleasure talking yeah. to you. My pleasure. Thank you. Thank you.